Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hi there. Thanks, guys, for being with us. Before we get going, just ask everybody, make sure you are subscribed and have the bell clicked for notifications. And so we're going to see this. This says everything. Few in U.S. say democracy is working very well. This is from the Associated Press. Yeah, I mean, it does say everything and actually then some. How many people do you think think that the U.S. democracy is working very well? I mean, if we were to ask this question maybe back in 2016, 2015, I think it would have been way higher than now. Can you believe this? Just 16 percent of Americans say democracy is working well or extremely well. That is incredibly low. Uh, yeah, Houston, we have a problem. Huge problem, Houston. When you have 16% saying that democracy is working well in this country, wow, something is really obviously way wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking so too. This is really incredible numbers here. Actually, it feels like so many people are in a stupor, are kind of punch struck. I think those are good good descriptions for sure. Yeah, we asked uh, a couple of friends who, well, at least one of them was definitely very active politically, keeping track on everything, and asked her, I said, are you going to vote, do you think, next time? And, you know, the answer was, nah, doesn't seem like there's any point anymore. Exactly. And, you know, it was kind of coming from, you know, a, de a defeated place, kind of like, well, why bother, you know? Well, we've talked about how, you know, when we always vote for one or one of the two parties, uh, in many ways, we're giving and acknowledging our approval of the system. You know, I, I know there was an awful lot of hope. There's been hope building that there could be some real positive change because, the country needs positive change. Um, I myself, you know, I've never been political because I've always felt that the system is corrupt to the heart. And, you know, it's kind of like, you know, sticking a Band-Aid on, you know, an amputated arm. One Band-Aid's not going to do a hell of a lot. No, you know, this whole system is death by a thousand cuts. It is, it is, you know, and at the same time, I was hoping to see something like the Libertarian Party, um, you know, get some traction, but, and even being a little bit on the inside of that Libertarian Party, uh, which is something I hadn't done before, actually become a member of a party, because I don't condone the system, because again, the system is corrupt, and uh, unfortunately, it feels like it's irreparably corrupt at the moment, but I could see by getting news briefs on what's going on in each state and what, what they're facing, you know, you have to be one of those two parties, really, to have a chance. Uh, because everything is stacked totally against you the way the system is put together. And now I think most people recognize that. So nearly half of Americans, 45%, think democracy isn't functioning properly. And there are 38% it's wor says it's working only somewhat well. Uh, you know, so th there's a lot of very unhappy people. That's the bottom line. There's a lot of very frustrated and unhappy people. And when we see, well, what's the new uh, admin going to look like? Well, we see President B appears to be expanding the U.S. occupation of Syria. So instead of drawing down, this seems to be building up, which is interesting. And over here, we see U.S. hosts Pacific War Games with Australia and Japan aimed at countering Russia and China attack. The U.S. military has kicked off joint war games with Australian and Japanese uh, military members there on the western Pacific island of Guam, which will specifically focus on countering a theoretical future aerial attack from either Russia or China. The joint exercises dubbed COPE North 2020 began last Wednesday, scheduled to run all the way to February 19th. That's long. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty long exercise. And crucially, the exercises will include F-35A Joint Strike Fighters, marking the first time the advanced stealth jets are going to be deployed to Anderson Air Force Base in Guam. 
And we've been watching a lot of things going on. We were talking to some of our family in uh, Australia, which we have a lot of people in Australia and in New Zealand that are part of this family. And, you know, the numbers that we see reflected as far as the views, uh, you know, we know that they're way, way less uh, than what the reality is. But the feeling there was that uh, the same sort of thing, like that strong influence coming from the fine dining where country is growing and perhaps getting a little bit more aggressive and at the same time we have russia china and iran holding joint joint naval drills in the indian ocean they're going to be holding drills in response so you know again it's interesting to see how one party is always pointing the finger towards one of these two countries the other towards the other the two the reality is those two countries are allied uh, and, the, of course, there are the puppet masters that are maneuvering everything into position. You know, uh, there's hardly any industry in the world that makes money like the military industrial complex makes money. And here you see the IRGC Navy receive 340 more combat speedboats on Islamic Revolutionary Anniversary. And these are stealth speedboats. And... Uh, you know, I've read about the plans and how they could try to sabotage or take out a aircraft carrier uh, by coming in fast with something like this that was armed with, you know, something maybe like what we saw in Beirut, you know. So it's interesting, you know, things have not eased. I think that's the bottom line is I think a lot of people thought things were going to ease. Yeah, maybe business is back to usual. But things haven't eased as far as certain tensions. Oh, I know. The tensions are just rising and rising. And to see something like this is very disheartening to me. I don't like seeing that at all, especially with the amount um, that they brought in and how how they're equipped with so much military equipment. It's just scary. I was watching uh, a different thread on a forum where people were talking about navies and stuff. And... You know, I, there's just kind of this mindset that nothing compares to the U.S., um, which, you know, perhaps has been the case in the past. And again, you know, I got a question <laughs> where all the money's going. And a lot of you guys know, you know, understand the shell game that has been going on. And we were talking about China building up their Navy, <clears throat> which, you know, Russia has a formidable Navy as well. Uh, but the Chinese Navy is actually, uh, it's its built up at a very, very fast pace. Now, the U.S. dominates the air, and that has it, that's still there. But here you can see naval power. The U.S. Navy it, it has 490 ships in it, and China has 777. So some of those are what we would call junks. You know, some of those are... Uh, things that are pretty small. They don't, they're not all destroyers and things of the sort. But they've been ramping up and building up. And then when you add Russia to this, the actual fleet strength is double the U.S. It's more than double the U.S. And so it's, it's interesting to watch what's going on as, you know, the balance of power in the U.S. has been shifting and the world has been shifting in the U.S. too, you know, because the power is no longer in the people's hands. And that's been the case for a long time. You know, we could go back to 1871 and talk about certain acts that came in. Um, I thought this was interesting, too, because right before January 20th, there was 55 ships at sea. Now there's 105 deployed you know so there's a lot a lot more deployed and actually you have four carrier groups you have four strike groups here in the pacific right now uh we only have one really in the middle east but one of these i think they were saying the eisenhower is going to probably go and and join that one over there these two right now the gerald ford and the eisenhower strike groups are conducting exercises as well and they have been on the atlantic south atlantic uh, well southeastern u.s coastline i should say uh, so that's interesting as well. You almost got double the ships deployed now. And granted, you know, holidays, sailors get leave, right? So there, there is some of that as well. And again, when you look at the list of wars involving the U.S., it's mind-blowing, mind-blowing 
it almost feels like the entire country was created to be both a policing force and a controlling military force for perhaps, you know, well, I'll let you fill in the blank. Absolutely. There's so much going on here. And, you know, there's just reason to pause and look at things and see how they're set up. I mean, look at all these. It goes on and on and pages and pages and pages. So it's really time for us to kind of sit down over, take a take a look at everything and take a stand, you know, on on your level, however that looks for you. Understand that this system is just so not right. No, and, uh, you know, when we think, you know, land of the free, home of the brave, uh, did the Roman Empire have something similar, some sort of similar slogan there? I don't remember, but I believe they do. Or maybe the Sumerian before that as well, maybe the Atlantean before that as we go. I mean, you know, there's so many different things that the U.S. has been involved in militarily. And, you know, at one point in time, Texas... And New Mexico, Arizona, California, uh, Colorado, you know, part of Utah there, too. That was all owned by Mexico, Mm -hmm. you know, and and that was basically taken during a war. Uh, Otherwise, it wasn't part of the U.S. It was expansionism, really, and, you know, skirmishes. And we could get into details as we're still scrolling through these wars, guys, Mm -hmm. you know. So it's it's interesting to see the hypocrisy that exists in this world. This world is so hypocritical. The system is so hypocritical. The powers that be, these power structures we have on the globe, you know, that so many people have put their faith in. They're just so hypocritical as we're going to get to the end of the list one of these days. And by the way, Vietnam's calling another 100,000 birds because of uh, the bird flu. And this keeps going on, too. And this is going to add to everything that we have been talking about as far as, you know, food shortages, inflation. And speaking of inflation, you see global markets see inflation breaking out to multi-year highs. Yep, it's upon us. It's seriously upon us. And, uh, you know, it's it's kind of go time for getting together, taking care of yourself, you know, getting yourself situated Um, one of our family members we were talking to today, they moved into a new apartment and they're all already, you know, thinking about how am I going to grow in this apartment? Yeah. Yeah. That was really beautiful. I'm glad she's thinking ahead, doing great. And so we see airlines are ditching business hubs and rerouting flights to Florida because people want to, they got to maintain their sanity. So they want to get to the beach, the warmth, the sun, uh, a place that maybe hasn't been so strict in many ways. And the other aspect of this is one thing that the lockdown has done is it's created a lot of people that remote work, which I personally like that idea. Um, I think it creates the possibility of a lot more freedom. So that's that's one kind of good thing. But then again, at the same time, uh, you know, we're not seeing everybody face to face anymore. We're not seeing people smile anymore. And, you know, I think that's part of the bigger picture. Well, that human connection is so very important when people get together, you know, for a common interest or a common good and, you know, they can reach each other's heart chakras and feel that humanity. It actually does boost certain hormones in the body, certain happy hormones and makes people just feel better. But they've really done a good job at taking that away. Yeah. And, you know, by the way, about 30 percent of global commercial planes still are in storage. And as we've said, you know, mom and pop's businesses all over the all over the globe you know so many of them have been shut down and you know one of my favorite things to do especially when we're out traveling on the road is you know never go into a Chili's or any of these uh Panera any of these big chains I want to go into a mom and pop place and you know get a feel for what it's like to be a local and get a feel for the local flavors you know, and also support people locally, small small people, you know, not these big corporations that don't have a heart. Yeah, I know. I can't disagree with you there. So, guys, want to thank you for being part of the family. Thank you for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. We couldn't do it without you. If you need an appointment again, thanks. Uh, well, thanks. Thanks for <laughs> doing that, too. He's getting tongue-tied here. Um, 
you know, reach out to us at EEARTS at Proton Mail, Evolutionary Energy Arts at gmail.com. And thanks for your patience as far as uh, setting up the appointments and, and especially getting given a little time with the Vedic charts. Uh, Cindy is still uh, 15 to 20 deep at least behind. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys, but thanks for your patience. And it does take usually a, like two, three hours for her to put a chart together. And then when we set up a time to go over it, that's like another 40 to 60 minutes. Yeah, um, so we like to, um, we were going as high as seeing about eight people in a day, but that was kind of wiping us out with trying to keep up with everything else. So we're kind of sticking at about six is the most. So again, thank you for your patience. We want to try to help as many as we possibly can. We do appreciate it, you guys. God bless and namaste. God bless and namaste.